Welcome to the teaching ministry of B.D. Hyman. B.D. Hyman's teachings will prepare you to face life's difficult challenges through the power and knowledge of God's Word. Join us now as we discover the truth in God's Word with B.D. Hyman. Hello and welcome. Do you know what God wants you to be? Are you concerned with what God wants you to be? Most people aren't. Most people, and I'm talking about Christians now, Christians are concerned with <coughs> excuse me, their walk, with what they want to do, with how it affects them. The Lord wants us to get to know Him, to care about Him. People sing songs, it's all about you, Jesus, it's all about you. But to them it really isn't. You have to get to the place where it is all about Jesus. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. God certainly doesn't want his people to be couch potatoes, to sit in front of just random Christian television, watch every show there is, and just think it's all fine, and give no thought to what the truth really is. When people call me for prayer and I say to them, the first thing they have to do is get everything out of the way that is hindering the ability for God, yes, you can hinder God, hindering him from answering your prayers. God wants to answer your prayers. He's already said all his promises are yes and amen. So the first thing I do is say, all right, who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? Do you want to be all that God has for you? Oh, yes, yes I do. Well, then you're going to have to make some changes. You're going to have to look at the doctrine in all of its truth. And I start showing them areas of tremendous deception in doctrine, like the bride, like the law, like a lot of things. And they suddenly lose interest. Well, I didn't call to talk about that. I just want you to pray for me. Well, I'm not going to pray until we get everything in their life in line with the Word. People are always talking about the prayer of agreement. And it's, it's an absolutely awesome power, the prayer of agreement. But that means full agreement. Agreement for the two parties, agreement about the Word, as well as agreement about whatever they're praying for. So being a couch potato and just being entertained, because that's what it is. If someone watches just non-stop random Christian programming gives no thought to the word that is what they are doing they are being entertained and deceiving themselves into thinking that they're learning no they're just being confused so that's number one that's not what God wants you to be absolutely not and if you're looking for truth then you don't need to be entertained you just need to be pointed toward and immersed in the absolute whole truth. And the sad fact is most people don't know the whole truth. And I hear people say all the time, oh, we're not supposed to know the whole truth. We can't know the whole truth because, I mean, no one person can know the whole truth, so I'm just looking for the nuggets. Well, that's a formula for total confusion. I don't want to hear from anybody about nuggets. This is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That's what works. And most Christians never take the time or the trouble or spend the effort to know the truth. You can't be all that God wants you to be, whole, healthy, prosperous financially and in every other way, close to Him. If you are happy just going the world's way, attending bridge clubs, where you're surrounded by unbelievers who are moaning and groaning about all their sicknesses and their illnesses and their doctor's appointments and their prescriptions. That's not going to get you to be who you should be. If you're attending a dead church where there's no power, where the doctrine is putrid, you're not going to be all that God wants you to be. But most people are comfortable there because it's a social club. They don't want to be controversial. Oh, heaven forbid that they're controversial or rock the boat or ruffle any feathers. Well, 
do you want to walk this earth the way Jesus did? Because that's what he did. He ruffled every feather there was to ruffle. He was totally controversial. People either loved him or they hated him. No one was ambivalent about Jesus. And they shouldn't be ambivalent about you. And if you're going to be all that God has called you to be, then you're going to have to be willing to be disliked. You're going to have to will be willing to rock the boat, just like Jesus did. The Word tells us we're supposed to walk as He walked. And He was controversial, heaven knows. And that's what you have to be willing to be. In John 15, 18 through 20, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. So if everybody loves you, you got a problem with God. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. <clears throat> if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. Don't think that you can walk in the truth and be where God wants you to be. Have everything that he has paid for on the cross at such a great price and that you can just walk in it without any effort on your part. No. John 17, 14 through 18. Jesus says, I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. You see, the Lord told us we would be hated because those who hate him, who hate the truth, are going to hate us if we are representing God correctly. So you're going to have to develop, if you want to be what God wants you to be, all of it, you're going to have to develop a thick skin and stop being so touchy-feely and concerned with what people think about you and what people say about you. People say horrible things about me. And my reaction to it is, I'm in good company. They said pretty terrible things about Jesus, too. And I know that that is um, a confirmation that I'm doing what God wants me to do. I mean, all you have to do is Google my name, and you will hear all sorts of terrible, horrible lies people have made up about me. And just amazing things. They're, they're so absurd. They're ludicrous. They're laughable. And I don't take them seriously. I know what's going on. And the devil hates me. Wow, that's really cool. The more he hates me, the happier I am. And those whom he's controlling, let everybody know about it. And so this is what it is. If nobody hates you, you're not doing what you need to do. He says, just as I am not of the world, the world hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Not just to get along with people and look for the warm fuzzy no to be a true believer to be what god wants you to be all that god wants you to be which is awesome which is amazing you must be willing to be at odds with most everybody and that includes most christians most christians do not have ears to hear this is what jesus talked about all the time the fact that they didn't have ears to hear. We're not supposed to be comfortable around unbelievers. It's actually easier to be around people who don't even think about the Lord than to be around people who call themselves Christians and don't believe anything, who still go right on talking like the world, thinking like the world, and being like the world. And this is not what we are called to be. We are called to come out and be separate, to come out from false doctrine, to come out from all of the 
of the perversion of the kingdom and to stand for righteousness, God's way of doing and being right, to stand for everything he paid for and to realize what his walk on this earth was. You know, we say, yes, we want to be like him. People wear little bracelets saying, what would Jesus do? But they don't really think about it because their idea of what would Jesus do is to just stand there and be a doormat and that's somehow loving people. No. If you want to walk in the same love that God has, the same love that Jesus walked in on this earth, then you better love people enough to tell them the truth and accept that most of them are going to hate you for it. Most of them are going to call you names. Most of them are going to say that you're part of some cult. Most of them are going to oppose you in every way possible. And because of that, you know that you are walking as Jesus walked. If everybody loves you and they want to invite you to everything and you go to everything and you have no problem with all the nonsense that they're spouting, then you are not walking with the Lord. You are not going to be all that he wants you to be, let alone do all that he wants you to do. You are part of a separate race. And this is what most people don't get. In the old covenant, there were the Jews and the Gentiles. The Jews were God's people. And the Gentiles was a phrase that covered everybody else on the face of the earth that didn't know God. And at that point, the only people who had a relationship with God were the Jews. We still have this side of the cross. See, we have to use that cross as a dividing line. That, that cross is a separation. And this side of the cross, we still have Jews, but they no longer have a relationship with God because God cut them off. Yes, he did. And now they have to come to him through Christ, just like everybody else. That's why Jesus said, unless you choose to call him a liar, that the only way to the Father, this side of the cross, is through him. There is no other way. There is no other covenant. So you have still have Jews on the earth and you have Gentiles. And they are all unbelievers, but they are still here. But in addition to them, out of those two groups, Jesus has formed a third race. Because God only sees these three races. He doesn't see all the ones we see and care about. Race is not an issue with God. So we have Jews, we have Gentiles, and out of the Jews and out of the Gentiles has been formed Christians, Christians, those in Christ, Christians. I say Christians because Christian has become kind of a generic word. And we have become Christians. We are a new race of beings, new creatures in Christ. We are not of any other group. All of us who are Christians were either Jews or Gentiles before we became Christians. But now that we are Christians, we are in a separate race. We are in the kingdom of God. And we have to do his will no matter what. That's why he says those who are in the tribulation in 2 Thessalonians 2.10, they, they're there because they never developed a love of the truth. That's why the Lord says he magnified his word even above his name. The name is recognition, but the word is relationship. And we have to love this word. And when someone starts talking about the word, we have to be totally riveted and we have to make sure it lines up with the written word. This Bible is the greatest prophecy that there ever has been or ever will be. You, there's no so-called prophetic word. And most prophets in the earth today, as Jesus said, are false prophets. So we have to be very discerning. But the first test of any prophetic statement is, does it line up with the word? 
Because if it doesn't, it didn't come from God. God does not contradict himself. He says his word is settled in heaven forever. Heaven and earth are going to pass away, but his word is forever. And so we're not supposed to be comfortable around unbelievers. The Lord said in uh, Mark 16, 15 through 18, that these signs would follow those who believe, a true believer, that they would cast out devils, number one. Not just talk about, oh Lord, please deliver Brother Harry, but cast out devils, confront them, move the demons out of the way. Number one, get the devil out of our business. That they would speak with other tongues, this, this is absolute, that they would lay hands on the sick and the sick would recover, not just pray for people endlessly, but they actually would recover, that they would have nothing deadly harm them, doesn't matter what virus is out there, doesn't matter what's in our food, doesn't matter what's in our water, what's in the air, nothing deadly shall harm us. God knew things were going to get to where they are, where we were going to be at risk for everything in the natural realm, but in the supernatural realm where you're supposed to live, you're not at risk. And you need to use the covenant. You need to learn the covenant so that you can defeat every attack, every virus, every germ, every everything. And that's going to make you very controversial because people don't like that. They'll travel the whole world to find some clinic to treat their terminal hopeless disease that has a 20% chance of success. And that's probably exaggerated. They'll do that, but come to Christ and learn how to receive what he did for them on the cross? Oh, no, 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 that's just too weird. They'll take out second mortgages. They'll take loans at in insane interest rates to pay for things in the world that are supposed to fix their problem, their physical problem, their financial problem, whatever. And they don't work. And they have a track record of not working. But people will go to that. They'll chant. They'll meditate. They'll go through all kinds of demonic hoops. But learn the word? Oh, that's controversial. That's controversial. And so you have to be willing to be there. Because that's who you're supposed to be. You're not supposed to be some little nice, get along with everybody person that just watches Christian television to be entertained, that goes to any old church, that is concerned with um, offending someone or being rude to someone. That's not what you're supposed to be looking at. And if you are, then there's nowhere you're going to go that's going to work. You know, people ask me all the time whether uh, there's a diplomatic way they can leave their church. No, you just leave. And when they call and ask you why, you say, because I've chosen to go a different direction. I have chosen to go after the truth. And that's where I've gone. And don't expect them to understand it. That's just if you have to answer them. My response is don't look at the caller ID and don't even answer the phone. But we have to be willing to be in this place. And if you get along with everyone, if you don't offend anyone, if they don't offend you, then you're not a real believer and you're not going to be all that you can be. You can't, as the saying goes, have your cake and eat it too. You can't be part of the world and popular. And when I say the world, I include religion because the religious system, not the system of faith, not the kingdom, but the religious system, which is what man has made out of the kingdom, is a failed system. And if you can function in that system and get along with it and find nothing wrong with it, then you're never going to get everything God has for you. You're not going to receive what he's done for you. So really think about this. Really get your, your head around who you are supposed to be. And religion teaches that we're all supposed to just help each other and hold hands and, and sing kumbaya. But that's not what it's about. 
That's not what Jesus did. That's not what he taught us to do. Why do you think the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day, were always trying to kill him? Because he defied their system. He told them there was another way. And they no longer uh, were able to keep control if they gave in to what he said of this religious system that they liked so much. That's why they hated him. So I want you to get this teaching set. It is called Do All and Be All. And it will rock your world. It will give you the knowledge and the power to get where you want to be. But you're not going to get there by just continuing to do what you've been doing and just listening to this as well. A lot of people try that. They continue in their dead churches and listening to all the false doctrine and they just try to add my teachings because most of you who are listening recognize that I only tell you the truth and I tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth whether it's popular or not. That's why I preach things that other people don't preach. They're in the Bible but they're not popular. So most people are receiving an, an incomplete gospel because the uncomfortable parts, the uh, statements God makes about his detesting of sons of disobedience, his requirement of his Ten Commandments of the New Testament, different from the Old, all of these things are controversial. And so most people don't teach them because most people just want to fill their churches build bigger ones and fill them and have more partners. And I am determined to reach those with ears to hear. And so I want you to get this teaching. Do all and be all you can be. Don't continue just to get along. Don't continue to just go along with the majority of Christians. Just because they're the majority does not make them right. Being in line with the word is what determines right and wrong. And so dig in to who you're really supposed to be. Dare to let God change your perceptions by what he says in his word. Dare to be the controversial believer that God has called you to be. Dare to be as Jesus was when he walked this earth and showed us how to be a believer. To be able to walk in everything that the Lord has provided for us, we have to be fully invested in the kingdom, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. Not what religion tells you, not what the world tells you, not what's comfortable to your flesh, but what God says. You have to be willing to walk this narrow path with the few that are on it. And that's one of the great challenges because the true body of Christ is very few. The Lord said it would be this way. And not only did he say that narrow was the way that led to life and few there would be that found it, he also said it was a difficult path. It's much easier to go along with everybody, to be popular, to be liked, to just agree with everyone. You know, this popular idea of agree to disagree. As long as we all believe Jesus is Lord and, and he rose from the dead after he was crucified and died on the cross, uh, that everything's fine. Everything's fine, no problem. Well, yeah, big problem. That's what we have to know to begin but then we have to walk in the rest of it. He didn't give us a tract. He gave us the whole Bible. And we're required to understand it. We're required to understand it. In Luke 21, 36, Jesus says, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. You see, this is not only about you being healthy prosperous, whole, blessed, full of joy and peace now. 
This is about qualifying for the glorification and the rapture. Be sure that you are counted worthy to escape the tribulation that is coming and stand before the Son of Man. We have so much at stake, folks. Not only our well-being now and the requirement to overcome everything that the devil sends at us and every nasty thing comes from the devil. Don't fall in with that nonsense of God allows certain problems and sicknesses to teach. No, he doesn't teach that way. That's not his teaching method. He teaches us by the word, and it's up to us to receive the word. We can walk away from it, but the word is what teaches us. The word is what chastises us. And that's why most people don't want to hear the word, because they realize that they're being corrected by the word, and so they choose to take offense. And they take offense at the person who is trying to help them. But what they're really doing is taking offense at the word. And we have to be stand up and we have to stand up and be counted. We have to be willing to do whatever it takes to be everything that God has given us to be. If you cling to your old ways, old friends who refuse to believe, old relatives who refuse to believe, uh, you're going to be weighed down with that. You have to do what Jesus said. Come out from among them and be separate. And that's what's lacking in most people. Oh, they want everything that God has for them. They want to be healthy. They want to be prosperous. They want to be in the rapture and be part of the future with Christ. But they don't want to let go of what they've been doing. And if you want your life to change, you've got to be willing to make changes. And the changes are all outlined in this word, clearly. But you have to be willing to accept them. As the Lord says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then everything else will be added unto you. So don't just stay in that rut. Don't just stay in that oppression because you're afraid to move on. You're afraid of letting go of the people that you've been clinging to that are dragging you down. Bind that fear. Rebuke that fear. Cast it out and grab hold of this wonderful golden ring that God has for you that will carry you into blessing and a future with him. Don't miss out. I will see you next time. Meanwhile, remember, you shall know the truth, and it's the truth that shall make you free. We trust that you have been encouraged in God's Word during this broadcast. If you have and would like others to enjoy the teaching, write to us or to order materials or to make a gift by phone. You can by calling the phone number on the screen.